Welcome back to another episode of Random Math Stuff. Today's a bit different from usual, the first half of the video will be mainly game theory rather than math. Alright, let's start. 3D tic-tac-toe is quite simple, there is a 3x3x3 grid. This is how we're going to draw it, we have 3 different colored layers, and each layer is 3x3. Don't worry, it's not going to get too confusing, because spoiler alert, the game won't last more than 4 moves. Anyway, player 1 starts by placing an X, player 2 places an O, and then they alternate back and forth and back and forth and whoever gets 3 in a row first wins. And yes, stuff like this counts as 3 in a row. As long as they're all in a line, it's considered 3 in a row. Also, keep in mind that we can increase the number of dimensions however much we want. Nothing about tic-tac-toe stops working when you add a fourth dimension, or even more. Before we start though, and I'll tell you the answer right away, I want you to guess who has the advantage as the number of dimensions increases. In 2D tic-tac-toe, what you're used to, the game ends in a draw if both people play perfectly. Does the same happen in all higher dimensions? Or is there a point where player 1 starts having a winning strategy? Again, I'll tell you the answer right away, just take a guess. Okay, player 1, the person who goes first, wins in 3D, and they also win in every dimension higher than 3. To understand why, we need to start with normal 2D tic-tac-toe. Even though this is a draw, that's only if both players play perfectly. So let's look at what moves you should make in order to maximize your chances of winning. First move, you take the corner, not the center. This is because taking the corner leaves the opponent with only one good option, which is to take the center. If they take anything else, they will end up losing if you play correctly. Alright, let's look at one of these scenarios. You take the corner, opponent takes the adjacent square. Now you take the center. Opponent is forced to go here, so now you go here. See what's happened? You've created a triangle with two different winning threats. The opponent has to cover both these threats at the same time, which is of course impossible. So you win. I could go over some of the other scenarios as well, but they're all basically the same. You go first, they go second, you create a threat, which they're forced to answer, and you create a triangle, which is two threats at once. Since it's impossible to stop both threats at the same time, you win. But wait a minute. All of this, all of these scenarios have been under the assumption that you're the one going first. Reason is, if you're not going first, there's not really much you can do. Whoever goes first, player 1, gets to create the first threat. So player 2 basically doesn't get a second move. They are forced to go wherever player 1 wants them to go. So even in 2D, player 1 technically has an advantage. The game only ends in a draw because player 2 can just barely hold on by taking the center square, the only safe square. Okay, you might be asking, why did we go in the corner square first? Isn't the center square better? Let's see what happens if you do that. We place an X in the center. Just like when we placed an X in the corner, our opponent only has one good move, placing their O in the corner. But see, there are four corners, whereas in this other scenario, there was only one center. So if we go in the corner first, only one out of the eight remaining squares is safe for our opponent, compared to four out of eight when we go in the center. But center first does have one thing going for it, that becomes even more advantageous in 3D tic-tac-toe. Notice how every square is connected to the center. So, if we control the center, no matter which square we take, we will always be creating a threat. This isn't true for the corner, because you could place an X here and nothing will happen, no threats have been made. So, generally speaking, the center is a more valuable square than the corner. It just so happens that corner is better as a first move. Alright, now that we understand 2D tic-tac-toe, time for 3D. Why does player 1 win in 3D? What's the winning strategy? Let's try using the same winning process as we did in 2D. We go first, player 2 goes second, we create a threat. Player 2 is forced to respond and we make a triangle which is two threats at once. Okay, let's take the corner first since that was the best in 2D. Player 2 should probably go in the middle if they want to not lose. After all, it was the best option in 2D tic-tac-toe. Now we create a threat. Player 2 is forced to respond, but uh oh, they now have a threat of their own. So we need to respond to that, and now we don't have a triangle, and in fact we don't even have a threat. So player 2 just does whatever they want, and now there are all sorts of possibilities and we're too lazy to check all of them. Okay, let's go back. We go in the corner, player 2 goes in the middle. Now when we create the threat and force player 2 to go somewhere, that square shouldn't create a threat. So what square won't create a threat? None of them. Just like in 2D tic-tac-toe, every square is connected to the center. So wherever player 2 goes, they will end up creating a threat that we need to respond to, and this is bad for us. It keeps us from creating a triangle, which is our end goal since that wins us the game. Anyway, the point is, the center spot is too powerful. If player 2 has it, then we won't get an automatic win. So it looks like our very first move should be to grab the center square. Now, wherever player 2 decides to go, we just go next to them. This creates a threat every time because we have control of the center. Remember what we learned in 2D, the center is very good at creating threats. So now, because of the threat, player 2 is forced to go here, which doesn't create a threat because they don't have the center. Now it's our turn, and we're going to try and create a triangle somewhere, two threats at once. But look what we've been doing. We have been playing 2D tic-tac-toe this whole time. We haven't used the 3D aspect of the board yet. 
If we were playing on 2D, we wouldn't be able to create a triangle, but now since we're in 3D, we can just make a triangle using the new dimension. And now there are two threads at once, and we win. So, our new strategy in 3D is, start with playing normally on a 2D board, and then when the time is right, we create a triangle using the third dimension. Here's what that looks like. We go in the middle, and no matter where they go, it'll always be connected to the 2D board. It can even be diagonal, like this. This counts because it still operates exactly like every other 2D board. Now, we stay on this 2D board, and we create a threat. They also need to stay on the 2D board, because there's a threat here. If they go anywhere else, they lose. So they go here, and only now do we step out of two dimensions. We create a triangle, and the game is immediately over. So the big idea is, player 1 has the advantage in higher dimensions, because player 2 never gets to use any of those dimensions. They are stuck responding to player 1's threats on the 2D board. So player 1 keeps them trapped on a normal tic-tac-toe game, and whenever they feel like it, they can just use the new dimensions, make a triangle, and win the game. Alright, that's pretty much the whole video, but when I was making this video, I found some stuff that I don't want to just throw away, so here it is. This section will slowly get more math related rather than game theory related. Alright, first, a rule of thumb when playing variants of tic-tac-toe is this. The best spots to take are the spots that have the most three in a row going through them. So for normal tic-tac-toe, the center has four three in a row going through it, each corner has three three in a row going through it, and each edge has two. So the center is the most valuable spot, followed by corner, followed by edge. Now this is quite obvious if you think about it, because of course you want to take the spots that have the most winning potential. By the way, let's call the number of three in a row the potential of that square. So yeah, center has the highest potential, four. It gives you more chances to win, so it's the most valuable square. The same idea applies to connect four, where you try to get four in a row instead of three. Also, there's gravity. These spots in the center have the most potential, they have the most four in a row going through them. Here's a complete map, you can see that the closer the position is to the center, the higher potential. In fact, Connect 4 has been solved. The person who goes first always wins if they play correctly, but their first move must be to go in the middle. If you go here or here, the best you can do is draw, and if you go on the outskirts where the potential is low, you will end up losing. All this is assuming perfect play, of course. But the point of this Connect 4 side tangent is just to say, this rule of thumb is important and decides the winning strategy for many games. I think it might be one of the reasons why control of the center is so important in chess, but I have no idea, I'm 500 ELO. Anyway, back to tic-tac-toe. Remember how in 2D tic-tac-toe, the best strategy is to go corner first? What's up with that? Why not center first for the higher potential? I think this is probably just a coincidence, after all this is just a rule of thumb. 3 and 4 are pretty close to each other, so whether you pick the square with potential 4 or potential 3 is not a decision that really affects the game too much. On the other hand, in 3D, the potential of the center spot grows to 13 while the potential of the corner is only 7, and the potential of the other two types of spots is even smaller. But this explains why in 3D, the best strategy shifts from going in the corner to going in the center. 13 is much larger than 7, so the center is much more valuable. This discrepancy only increases as the number of dimensions increases. I encourage you to pause and try to find a general formula for the potential of the center spot in terms of the dimension, which we'll call D. In other words, given a game of tic-tac-toe in D dimensions, how many three in a row go through the center spot? For D equals 2, normal tic-tac-toe, your general formula should spit out 4, and if you plug in D equals 3, it should give you 13. You can also try to find a general formula for the potential of the corners as well. Okay, the potential of the center spot is 3 to the power of D minus 1, all over 2. This is because the center is connected to every single position, as we saw before. There are 3 to the power of D total positions, minus the center, so minus 1. And there are half as many 3 in a row, because each position is paired up with another position to form the 3 in a row. So for each two positions, there is one 3 in a row. And here's the same thing, but in 3D. So this is our general formula, the number of positions divided by 2. Now for the corners, the potential is 2 to the power of d minus 1. This is because each 3 in a row that goes through a corner must also go through another corner. Just focus on this fact and think about why this is for a second. If we assign each spot a coordinate so that the center is 0, 0 or 0, 0, 0 if you're in 3D, what do you notice about the coordinates of the corners? That's right, they're all 1 or negative 1. Same thing happens in 3D and all other dimensions as well. Now, to make a 3 in a row, the coordinates need to follow a pattern. For example, look at this 3 in a row. See how the x coordinate changes by 1 each time? And it does so twice, so the x coordinate has a total change of 2. It goes from negative 1 to 1. 
If we go to 3D and look at a different 3 in a row, we can see that this time, the x, y, and z coordinates all change. But again, they are only changing by one at a time, and they do so twice, so each coordinate ends up changing by two as you move from end to end. This means that one changes to negative one, and negative one changes to one. So, if you start at a corner with all ones and negative ones, you end up at another corner since you still have all ones and negative ones. With this fact proved, we can find the potential of corner spots. We just have to ask, how many other corners are there besides this one? Well, if we look at the coordinates, each coordinate can be either 1 or negative 1, and we need to make this decision for d total coordinates where d is the dimension. So, there are 2 to the power of d total corners, each of which correspond to a unique 3 in a row. Except for this one, since we started here, you can't have a 3 in a row that starts and ends on the same square. So our final answer for the potential is 2 to the power of d minus 1. Alright, we have our two general formulas. If you look closely, you'll notice that both formulas grow exponentially, but this one grows faster because it's 3 to the power of d and not 2 to the power of d. This means the discrepancy between these two values will get bigger and bigger as the number of dimensions increases. So for very high dimensional games of tic-tac-toe, the center becomes very very valuable, and the winner of the game is essentially whoever has control of the center. So how about we stop that? Let's see what happens if in 3D tic-tac-toe, no one can go in the center. It is now blocked off. Since a lot of the three in a rows are no longer possible without the center, we need to recalculate the potential of each position. Now, corners have potential 6, face centers have potential 4, and edges have potential 3. So corners remain the more valuable spots compared to face centers and edges, so player 1 would naturally go there first. Now notice these three faces of the cube. Player 1 already has an x in each of these three faces. Whatever player 2 does, there will always be at least one face that only has an x in it. So player 1 would just ignore player 2 and focus on that face since they already have an advantage there. So now we're playing 2D tic-tac-toe again, except it's player 1's turn. So yeah, they just place another x and it's not even close, player 1 wins easily. So yeah, I don't really know how to balance this game and make it fair for both players. Maybe we open the center back up and add a rule that says you can't go there on the first move? I don't know, it just feels too gimmicky and too many rules, I don't like it. Because tic-tac-toe is supposed to be a simple game. If you have an idea, comment it below, I guess. Yeah. That's all I have for you today, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.